Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. With the support of Metro East Community Media, we're interviewing candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Jack Kerfoot, running for Portland City Commissioner, Position 2. Welcome, Jack. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you for coming. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. There are many uh, candidates running for this office. What makes you unique? Well, Jack Kerfoot is determined. I was determined to overcome my humble beginnings and, grad to, and go to university and graduate from university. I worked minimum wage jobs for two years, then served with the 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam, returned, worked my way through university, and then earned my degrees in geophysics. I graduated from University of Oklahoma in 1976 when America was facing a different type of energy crisis. My career in the energy industry took me around the world and provided me the opportunity to work with scientists, bureaucrats, ministers, and heads of state. My style is to listen and to collaborate to solve problems. I've spent over 40 years in the energy industry working with governments, unions, and corporations to re-energize organizations around the world. My international experience provides me a unique perspective in problem solving, having worked with countries in Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, and South America. In 2018, I wrote my book, Fueling America, an Insider's Journey. Uh, now I've been, over, been on over 45 radio and television programs across America to discuss why it's important for America to move from fossil fuel to renewable energy. I am a proven leader. I will listen, I will collaborate, and I will communicate. And I believe it's important that we work together to bring our community, as well as our state and our country, together. Thank you. We have the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, housing displacement, and these issues will be with us for quite some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Well, I think the first thing we have to, I have to emphasize is the seriousness of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, in April, I believe it was 14th of this year, we had over 590,000 people that had contracted the virus, which is probably an underestimation as well since the testing is so limited. We've had over 25,000 people actually die from that virus, and I believe these figures have increased dramatically. Our city government must take a leadership role to ensure the safety of all the residents in our city, especially the most vulnerable people, the elderly, and of course, the homeless. Our city must work closely and collaborate with federal, state, businesses, nonprofits, and faith-based organizations to obtain and distribute adequate materials, face masks, and testing equipment, to make sure the people in need have the resources to help us through this pandemic. Our city must also ensure the recommended safety procedures, such as social distancing, are followed strictly for the safety of everyone in our city. It's essential that our city, city council is prepared for a range of economic outcomes. We've got to recognize that some would estimate the pandemic could last one year, other estimates are as three to five years. So as such, we have to have a city council that has developed a program that will address these fiscal uncertainties. First of all, we must develop a rank list of priorities. Second of all, we must develop a series of budget scenarios to recognize the uncertainty that the revenues that will impact our city may be dramatically impacted, not just one year, but up to two, three, or four years. We must implement strict cost control and make sure there's no fiscal waste. And unfortunately, we've had cases of fiscal waste and mismanagement over the last few years. We must also put in place a hiring freeze for non-essential employees, collaborate with the business sector to try and re-energize the economy, and actively recruit new businesses to our city to bring in new jobs and to reinvigorate our community. Thank you. If we maintain our current Portland city government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Well, I would first start off and say that I have read the League of Women Voters assessment of the different uh, types of government. And I actually am supportive of changing the type of city council government that we have to be a more responsive type of program. 
However, with the current type of government that we have, my priorities are first of all, parks and recreation, simply because they are faced with a significant financial shortfall before the COVID-19 virus. And I have the business expertise uh, to, I believe, find ways and the innovation to find ways to close those gaps on the shortfall that they will have. Second of all, building services. Over the last four years, the costs for building have escalated dramatically for two reasons. First of all, slow bureaucratic processes, and second of all, exorbitant fees associated from different costs. They're adding significant hundreds of thousands of dollars on even, even single family residents. Third, PBOT, transportation. Our Vision Zero pro program is failing and has seen nothing but an escalation in fatalities on the traffic, on the road traffic. There are programs, if we look at, again, my background in science, and we look at analogs, and there are cities in Europe, in Canada, and major cities on the East Coast that have come up with programs that have delivered significant reductions in traffic fatalities. And finally, planning and sustainability. My background is science, I'm an advocate for renewable energy, and I believe I can lead the programs relative to managing and developing long-term sustainability. Thank you. We have two questions and two minutes. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police, community relations, use of deadly force, and officer accountability? First of all, we've got, uh, we've got to recognize that every commissioner in the entire city council has to be transparent. And we have to make sure that we are fully knowledgeable of all the uh, details of any incident that occurs. I actually am supportive of the Portland Police Bureau's discipline guide being thoroughly reviewed, specifically for to establish levels of discipline of various officers. At the same time, we have to recognize that across the community that we have groups that are suspicious, if not right, hostile toward the Portland Police Bureau. At the same time, in my outreach for my campaign before the COVID-19 virus, I've met communities across the entire city that are highly supportive for our police uh, community programs. Unfortunately, we have over 104 vacancies in the Police Bureau, and there are more vacancies that will occur because of scheduled retirements. I believe it's essential that we develop, bring in bright, young, talented people to help close the gap with the uh, the shortfall that we have so we can enhance our community policing. But in summary, it's essential that on any instance, the entire city council analyzes the data, is as transparent, and works with all sides to try and close gaps or in anger or resolve the issues in an amicable way. Thank you. Pretty quickly, you talked about parks. It, it faces serious financial challenges, even more so since the pandemic. What do you have, um, what ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved park system? There are several things. First of all, we need to go out and actively work with the uh, major businesses in the area to look for ways to collaborate with them to try and bring them in to market their brand at the same time get substantial uh, financing. Second of all, we've got to recognize that our facilities have significant, for instance, um, the uh, facilities have significant value. We could rent out some of these facilities um, for major uh, functions that would generate extra revenue. Third, we, can all, we have a significant uh, volunteer base uh, that is a very significant value to the city, but I've, it has been relatively stable over the five, last five or six years. We need to look for ways to re-energize that volunteer base and increase the volunteers because they offer significant value. There were over 500,000 hours that were in community at service work last year, and that's an estimated value of over $5 million to the parks. Thank you. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I do need to. I understand. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org to learn about all the races on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.